Welcome back to another Valley Sports Plug Phoenix Suns recap for December 28th, 2022 through January 10th, 2023. I'm Chris Patrick, and with me as always is my man Michael Benjamin here to break it all down for you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In the last two weeks, the Suns would go 1-6, and six, their record now 21-21, and 21, perfect 500 on the season. The last two weeks have been far from perfect, really disappointing to see as we shuffle through rotations, trying to figure out what's going to work. But let's just see how those last seven games broke down real quick. Started out with a six-game losing streak. It would start in Washington, where the Suns would lose 127-102. to 102. Then it was on to Toronto, where they would lose 113 to 104. They would lose to the Knicks 102 to 83. And then Cleveland to end the road trip, losing 90 to 88. Now back at home, they would take on the Miami Heat and fall 104 to 96. Then a rematch with Cleveland, where we had a chance to take them and get them back, but we would unfortunately lose that one as well, 112 to 98. And then finally, in Golden State, a game where everybody wrote the Suns off, we were able to get that win, 125 to 113, despite some of their best efforts to blow it there at the end. So I'll pass it on over to Mike for a deeper look at these last seven games and what's been going on. Is the alarm ringing yet? Are we worried, Suns fans? I mean, we can start to think about it and we'll speculate here in a little bit. But we're going to go through the stats of the Knights for each game, and we're going to start off with that first one against the Washington Wizards. There were reports that the Suns turned down a possible trade for Rui Hachimura, and he came out and put it on us. And it started the big skid that we saw. The Suns' ugly night finished with four technical fouls after halftime. And there was even a fan near the Suns' bench that ended up being ejected in the final two minutes. Headed to Canada against the Raptors. Gary Trent went off, 35 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. All you need to know from that game was DeAndre Ayton shot 2 for 10, scored 4 points. Oof. Then we start the new year off in New York with some of our worst basketball seen to date. I mean, you could even look at the Suns ending the second quarter on an 11-2 run. That's great. But they trailed 54-31. to Uh, Phoenix tied the fewest halftime points scored by a Knicks opponent since Orlando, which was in April of 2015. It's almost like we were going back to 90s basketball, seeing all these low-score games. It was crazy. And we followed that up with the 88-90 to loss against the Cavaliers. I mean, the Cavs, they came out flat themselves. They missed their first 15 three-point attempts. They scored a season-low 33 points at halftime, and they still ended up winning that game just how things have been going for this team right now. Then we finally end that road trip, ending one and five, come home, hopefully getting some momentum, but went up against the Miami Heat. And the Heat basically handled this game. They never trailed in the second half. And I went to the game with my fiance, Bree. Shout out, Bree. Love you, Bree. There was one stint in the second quarter where I was looking at her, just talking about the disappointment from DeAndre Ayton, and he had probably one of the worst five-minute stints that I've seen in a long time. Turnovers, missed shots, just bad. It was really embarrassing. And then we get Cleveland again. Uh, The schedule this season has been so weird in regards to how some of these matchups have been so close. Cavaliers are closer towards the top in the East for a reason. And DeAndre Ayton got hurt third time this year with that ankle situation i mean we'll probably get into the injuries as well but it's just crazy how undermanned these guys are and we go in to golden state tonight with steph curry coming back from an 11 game absence and they put it on him really going on a strong end to that first quarter pushing the lead to 27 points Very, very odd situation down in the fourth quarter where the Warriors cut it to six points with about a minute 30 left, and the Suns were struggling to get the ball past half court with a full court press. It's just something that you don't see from professional teams that much. And something that I saw, which was odd, was Dwayne Washington Jr. wasn't even on the floor during those time frames, and he's basically our only ball handler that we have right now with campaign, Chris Paul, and Landry Shamit, all of them missing this game. So just kind of odd. But Chris, I wanted to pass it back to you. 
and you can let us know what you've been seeing these past couple of weeks. Yeah, really disappointed in, in the Suns. It's going back to what I've said before on other podcasts and things we've done where the Suns just seem to not have very much depth this season. And when these guys go out and we've seen DeAndre Ayton miss, I think, five games now. Chris Paul has only played in 26 games. Devin Booker's only played in 29 games. And we just reached the halfway mark. We're at 42 games on the season. So not not really a sign of optimism. I've seen a lot of people already throwing in the flag saying that the Suns need to do what the Warriors did and just shut down all their players with injuries and rebuild, get a high draft pick, get the number one pick, and then everything will be perfect in a year. And I, I just think that some people might forget where we were just even five, ten years ago with this team. And a, a step backwards is just not an option. Uh, DeAndre Ayton specifically, he only played in six of those seven. You mentioned him missing this game against the Warriors. He averaged 16.5 points, 10.3 rebounds, and 2.8 assists, which sounds okay. But again, going back to the max money we're paying him, 16.5 and 10 for a max money player. And when you look deeper at that, it's really skewed by a 31-point performance and a 23-point performance. Otherwise, you take that out, and his true average is probably closer to 11 points a game or 12 points a game. So in my mind, just unacceptable. Looking at some other guys' stats, Mikel Bridges is another guy we're keeping a close eye on. Kind of similar stat lines, honestly. 16.3 points, so right around the same amount of scoring output as DeAndre Ayton, but only 4.6 rebounds and 4.3 assists. We know Bridges is one of those intangible players. He's going to do a lot of the stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, and we're going to continue to rely on him for that. A big thing of that is his availability. He has played every single game this season and hasn't missed a game, I think, in his NBA career and maybe even going back to his college career. He's an Iron Man for a reason. A couple guys I'll mention in their stats the last two weeks here. Chris Paul, in the five games he played, was 16.2 points, 5.8 assists, and three rebounds. So without Devin Booker, no player can seem to average more than 16 points a game. So really had to spread the love. And I just think it's been hard finding any sort of rhythm where we have to rely on a different guy every night to try and get it done. And it just hasn't been getting the job you know, done for lack of a better word. So maybe the ship is getting righted. Maybe now that this win with the Golden State Warriors, the team will remember what that's like and and carry that momentum forward. We just need the guys to be available. We need them to be on the court. It's funny that the one game we win is the game DeAndre Ayton didn't play in. Oh boy. I mean, the injury bug, Chris, is just getting out of control. I mean, we've already been down Cam Johnson for the past month and a half. Hopefully his return is somewhat imminent. I don't really know. I don't think they're going to force him back from that meniscus. But now, you know, we've just been seeing these guys get hurt and then re-injured. And it's a cause for concern. I mean, campaign missed nine games, comes back, gets injured in the same game, and now he's going to be reevaluated in two weeks. Chris Paul with his hip injury against Miami, who knows with him? You know, we've already seen little small issues with him keeps him out a couple of weeks. Landry Shamit is just in and out. And now Devin Booker, you know, the biggest thing is we don't have anybody who can create for themselves. And tonight we did get that win because we played really good team offense, swung the ball, got guys in good positioning, and we made our outside shots. But you see them once again fumble the bag down the stretch because they don't have a guy who can control the basketball in any sort of way. And, you know, you look at this six-game losing streak, 95.2 points a game, 14.5 turnovers. They shot okay, 42.9 from the field, 38.3 from three. But they also gave up 108 points per game. And in going into tonight, they hadn't scored over 100 points in four games. That just does not get it done in today's NBA. And you find yourself exactly where we're at, which is seventh in the standings for the Western Conference. We leapfrogged Golden State, thankfully, because of this win tonight. But Chris, I mean, with these injuries mounting up and our main weapons not being able to be on the floor, we could find ourselves looking at just trying to fight for a play-in spot in the play-in tournament in yeah. another two weeks from now. But with that being said, you know, it's tough to really look and see who might be your favorite guy out of the past two weeks with all of the L's that we've seen. But I want to know who your player of the recap is. Absolutely. And I think this was an easy choice for me, looking at a multitude of factors. For me, the player of the recap in the last two weeks is Damian Lee. 
he's really showed up and been consistent, reliable. He's not going to get the most points, but he's played every single game this season, all 42 games. He's played all seven games of this stretch during that time, 8.6 points per game, 3.3 rebounds and 1.6 assists. He did receive his championship ring at the beginning of that Warriors game. So he was feeling that champion spirit. It was running through him and he made 14 free throws, three of eight shooting, had 22 points in 31 minutes in that game alone. So I, I like the Damian Lee acquisition. It was pretty much one of the only moves we made in the offseason and just his reliability and coming into that starting role and really playing a role here for the Suns. That's that's been a slam dunk. And I really like the productivity he's been providing and, and kind of the kick he can provide when, like we've said before, he's a guy you can just rely on for a three pointer. Mike, what about you? Who is your player of the recap? I mean, we almost didn't have a player of the recap, man. That's for sure. If you go 0-7, I don't know how you can give flowers to anybody. But I'm going to go with Mikhail Bridges. Over his last seven, 16.3 points per game, 4.6 rebounds, 4.3 assists. Just over a steal and a block a game as well. Shooting 43.2% from the field, 39.3% from three. He had some incredible offensive rebounds to end this game where it seemed like momentum was switching even more towards Golden State when they were hitting some huge threes to get back in that game and just had that almost Sean Marion-esque second leap to get those baskets right there to keep that lead just where it needed to be for us to win this game. So I'm going with Mikhail Bridges. And we'll see who it is next week. I mean, there's going to be a lot of guys in this second unit who are going to have opportunities to step up and put their name on a national stage. Yeah, and I, I know we keep saying it, but the schedule is not getting any easier. Honestly, in today's NBA, I don't think there is a such thing as an easy schedule. There's a lot more parity in the league than there was even just three, four years ago. I mean, coming up, you look at it still on the road from after the Golden State game. We got Denver coming up, the number one seed in the West. Minnesota, they're kind of chipping, scrapping for a playoff spot as well. Memphis, again, another top team and maybe a budding rival of the Suns. Ja Morant is a, I know it can kind of be a polarizing personality and could be an interesting uh, matchup to see. I think there's a lot of storylines that we're going to keep tracking as we we watch the next two weeks in preparation for our next recap we'll be bringing to you. I, and I did just want to mention and, and piggyback off of one point you made there about the injury bug that's really been plaguing this team. It, it has me scratching my head a little bit because the Suns are supposed to be notorious for having this world-renowned medical and training staff and always keeping guys healthy and rehabbing them quicker. But now here we are where DeAndre Ayton's coming in and out. Chris Paul's in and out. Booker's now missing an extended period of time. And no update has been made on Cam Johnson that I've heard of, of any substance recently, other than, well, we should be hearing something soon. So a, a lot to keep tabs on, a lot to keep an eye on. You know, when healthy, this team is probably one of the best teams in the West, if not the best team in the West. So I'm not giving up hope. I think we get the guys healthy and we can get back to making a solid run and push for the playoffs. You know, that was part of what was being discussed is we had the best record in the league last year and look where it got us. We burnt out in the early rounds of the playoffs. So maybe taking too far of a step back now in trying to be healthy and cautious, we got to make sure we're ready for the playoffs. We're in the contending race and we're healthy and able to make a run. We got it. We got to do it. We got to do it. Just hold the line, stem the tide, have some of these second unit guys step up and scratch out some wins at this point we just got to keep our record right around 500 until we can start getting some guys in here but with that being said you know Devin Booker was on the I think it was about month watch for him to return which will put him right around January 30th and January 30th we're going to be doing a Phoenix Suns ticket giveaway two tickets section 109 row 11 to the January 30th game against Toronto Raptors I mean, D-Book, that might be his first game back. Make sure that you might have a possibility to be there. We're going to be doing an Instagram post on January 16th. Got to do a couple things, though, to make sure that you're in the raffle to get those tickets. You got to like the post. You got to tag three friends in the comments. You got to make sure you follow us. And you got to subscribe to our YouTube page where you're watching this now. We've got a whole bunch of content coming here in 2023 to start this season with the Arizona Cardinals, the firing of Cliff Kingsbury, the Diamondbacks, spring training right around the corner, and of course, 
the all-star break coming up for the Phoenix Suns and trying to see where this team is going next. So, Chris, I'll pass it back over to you to lead us off, man. Thank you, Mike. Really looking forward to that ticket giveaway. I'm very excited. Hopefully we get a good response. Would love to give you guys some tickets, send you to a game. If it goes well, uh, we might we might do this again. So make sure you're telling all your friends about it as well. Increase those chances. Make them a deal where if, if they sign up, they have to take you if they win, you know, something like that. Or like we said before, you can ask VSP Tallman. He, he was complaining about not going to a Suns game, so you could always take him. But anyway, we're going to keep coming at you every two weeks with these Suns recaps throughout the season. We just finished up our Cardinals recaps for their incredible season. So make sure you're following us across all our social media platforms. For Michael Benjamin, I'm Chris Patrick. We'll see you in two weeks. Peace.